Hi, I'm Kent. Let's talk about Shapecast. A while ago, I realized that one of the limitations in my slip casting was in my molds themselves. I've iterated a lot on making my pots and I've improved, but I hadn't iterated as much on my molds. So that prompted me to go down a deep dive into plaster mold making. And over the last several videos, I've actually been working on some software that lets me more easily make molds. I found this very useful and I figured it might be useful for you guys as well. And so I went ahead and created Shapecast. So the basic idea is that you can draw a profile of the pot you want and then go through a bunch of steps and then get out the exact same pot. This pot here was generated exactly from this profile. It has the same side taper and it has the same foot. So how do we go from a sketch to a pot? Well, we need a bunch of molds. First, we turn this sketch into a design proof that we can verify that we like and make sure that the size and shape is what we need. The software does this automatically, and once you say OK, it goes and creates a bunch of STL files that you can be 3D printed to turn into a mold that you can use for plaster. So this adds a slip well, accounts for clay shrinkage, it also goes and creates an outer mold if you want, and you see me developing this on the channel and see it used. You can then go ahead and make the plaster mold, slip cast a pot, glaze and fire it and you wind up with something like this. So in this video, I'm basically launching Shapecast. It's still in private beta because there are still some bugs to work out. I've had a few people use it successfully so far and I figured it'd be good to go ahead and talk about it and show how it works. There is a wait list, so you can go ahead and sign up on that. And as the bugs are worked out and I can expand capacity, I'll go ahead and add more folks on. So if you're curious, go ahead and join that wait list. So here is Shapecast. Gives you a quick overview. You go from sketch to 3D printed parts to plaster mold to pot. You don't need to do any 3D modeling at all. The software takes care of all that. You just need to design the 2D outline. So if you want to go ahead and sign up for the waitlist, you go and click on sign up here. You actually need to sign in first. So you go to login and then you do sign in with Google. Once you do that, you can go back to the sign up page. There's a little questionnaire there you can fill out. And as I mentioned, as I get space, I'll go ahead and add you to go ahead and use it. In the meantime, while you're waiting, you can go ahead and go over to the gallery. These are some of the examples I've shown on my video so far. So here is the profile of a tumbler. Here's a 3D rendering of the tumbler, picture of the plaster that I made, and here's the resulting tumbler that I made. I have a bowl, and I have a small bowl as well. So you can go ahead and download the SVG files. If you're designing a pot from scratch, you can use this as a starting point. Once you've logged in, even while you're on the wait list, you can go ahead and download the STLs as well if you want to make an exact copy of any of these. Once you're off the wait list, you'll get a couple of new menu items up here. So the heart of the app is create. So this here is a preview of your pot. This grid here is in millimeters and 25 millimeter increments, so about an inch. So you can go and verify that the pot's about the size that you want. So you can choose an SVG file. It will then load it in and give you a preview. As I mentioned, there are some bugs I'm still working out. Scaling and units and SVGs is one of those. This is actually just a preview to make sure that what you drew in 2D makes sense in 3D for you. In just a little bit, we'll go ahead and generate a design proof. That I'll want you to verify to make sure that everything is correct. All right, so we load it in. It's doing what we want. It looks like the pot that we need. So you can go ahead to the next step, which is continue to shrinkage. Here are a bunch of instructions on how to calculate your clay shrinkage. If you don't know, or even if you do know, it's probably good to go ahead and read through this just to make sure that it's the same. As I mentioned, the software does a bunch of work to go ahead and automatically account for clay shrinkage. Basically, it's scaling up the molds so that the final pot's the right size. What I want you to do is draw the final profile as opposed to a scaled up version so that the software is doing all the work for you. My clay shrinkage is 13%, but if you have something different, you can go ahead and use these dropdowns to pick something slightly different. At that point, you can submit for processing. So that will upload the SVG to the server and put it into the processing queue. So you can go over here to designs and these are your pots and their current status. So this will take between five and 15 minutes if the software is working. If the software is not working, it may actually get stuck. The software may have died in the background. Hopefully that's not the case and it won't take down the site for everyone, but it is possible. Once it's your turn in the queue, it will go ahead and take that SVG and turn it into the design proof I just mentioned. So the design proof is exactly this. It is a two scale final version of your pot. It basically takes the exact same curve that you drew and revolves it into 3D. It's not doing any other processing than that. Well, it's adding a little bit of a wall thickness so you can print it. I actually highly recommend that you print this out at the very least, you should open the STL file and verify that it's the right size and doing the right thing for you. All right, it looks like we're good. So now it says the status is check the design proof. I went ahead and highlighted that. So you can download this zip file here. Inside the zip file are two things. First, there's a readme. At this point, it is mostly empty. 
It just gives you an estimate of the final fired pot volume. So if you're trying to nail a particular size, for instance, for like a coffee cup, this will give you an estimate. It's not exactly accounting for the thickness of your clay walls, but it should give you relatively close. So you can see this tumbler is relatively large. It's about 580 milliliters or almost 20 ounces. The other file in here is an STL of the design proof. So this here is actually something that can be 3D printed out. And I recommend opening it up in a slicer so you can check it out. Here it is in our slicer. I went ahead and opened it up. This is Prusa slicer. You can use Cure or whatever. One of the things to note is the size. So make sure that this size here is really close to what you want. So this gives the width and the depth and the height. So it's about 100 millimeters across and about 125 millimeters tall. Make sure those numbers match what you drew in the SVG file. This is where the scale will come and bite you. If it's drastically bigger or smaller, that's a problem. I doubt it'll be slightly off. It should actually pretty much be right on if it's working. So even if you don't have a 3D printer and plan on sending these files off to someone else, I recommend going through this step just to make sure that they're right. If you do have a 3D printer, I recommend go ahead and printing it out. I've noticed that the difference between a sketch and a 3D rendering and the physical thing, I don't know, holding it, there's something different about it. So I've done a couple of different designs where I liked the profile that I drew and even the 3D rendering, but holding it, I didn't like it so much. So again, highly recommended. These are pretty quick to print out. The walls are relatively th thin and you can print them on a relatively low setting just to get an idea of what the form's like. All right, so we went ahead and checked the design proof and it is indeed what we think it is. We printed it out if we had the ability. So now the status updated. It tracked that we went ahead and downloaded the design proof so we could look at it and we can see the proceed or cancel. If we cancel, it's done. You'd have to start again. If you like it, go ahead and hit proceed. So it says the design proof is approved. That means you liked it. You would then get put back in the processing queue. And again, five to 15 minutes later, we should have the next step ready. All right, we just went out to the studio. We sanded a few pots. We slip cast a few more. And when we decided to come back and check the status of the software, and we can see that the STLs are completed. So we went ahead and was successful and we get another zip file to download. So we open that up and you can see there's a bunch more stuff in here. So one is a readme again. So this will give you again, the fired pot volume estimate, but it also gives you plaster. If you're using the outer mold that I make, it knows both the inside and outside, so it calculates the plaster volume, and therefore it can actually measure out the plaster for you. It knows the dry plaster and wet plaster, assuming you're using the same plaster I am. I have some instructions, and then I have basically a description of a bunch of the different files that I'll walk through in a second. And again, if you're using the outer mold, I have some links to some of the hardware you need to assemble the outer mold. So probably the file that's the most interesting is this inner.stl. This here is the inner mold that represents the pod itself. There is still the proof, so you can check that out. It shouldn't have changed. And then I have the outer mold pieces. So if you want to use my outer mold, here's the outer mold in one piece. And the ring to bind the inner and outer together. Or if you want to do it in several pieces, like it won't fit on your 3D printer, there's that as well. So we can load the inner mold into our 3D printing software. I actually recommend printing this upside down, so I'm going to flip it around just like that. This outside surface here is the one that is the pot, so you want it as good as possible. This will put any supports and anything on the inside, so we don't have any problems with that. One other thing to note is since we're accounting for clay shrinkage, this got bigger, so you notice that the size has gotten bigger, so we're at 162 millimeters almost across now. So we've grown a fair bit. As you're doing these designs, you'll want to make sure they actually fit on your printer. If they don't fit, then you'll either need to redesign your form or find a bigger printer. So at this point, you can go ahead and print out the inner mold. If that's all you want and you want to go ahead and use a bucket or cuddle boards, feel free. If you want to go ahead and use the outer mold, print out those pieces as well and assemble it like I've been showing on my videos. At that point, you can go ahead and print out those pieces, mix up and pour in the plaster, let the plaster cure, and dry, and then you have one brand new mold of your own design that you can slip cast pots into. A few notes, the processing can fail. This can happen for one of two reasons. At this point, one of the more likely reasons is that there is a bug in my software and you found it. I'm periodically checking the designs that fail and trying to figure out why they fail and slowly working through the associated bugs. So I might send you an email and either say that I fixed it or maybe to try something else as a workaround while I try and fix it. This can fail at the design proof stage or it can fail at the final processing stage. Either one is a possibility. The other reason it can fail is that there's something wrong in the design itself and the software can't handle it. So that's a quick overview of the software itself. Hopefully it makes sense. This is still beta and is very much subject to change. So if you find this video later, then this could look completely different, who knows? But at this point in time, that's how it works. What I wanna do next is walk through a little bit of the design process for drawing these curves so you have a better sense of how that works if you wanna do this yourself. 
I've gotten a few questions about which software to use for drawing the SVG file that we need. So I myself use Inkscape. This is an open source project. It's been around for a long time. It has lots of bells and whistles, way more than we need, but it does actually do what we need. And it supports basically all the different platforms. You can just download this and install it. And here is Inkscape itself. So this is the curve that I have that I printed out and made the pot with. This is exactly the same. There's a few things you wanna go ahead and do when you set things up. So if you go into document properties, one of the things you wanna do is make sure that the format's in millimeters and the scale is one. You probably wanna put the display units in millimeters as well. SVG was originally meant to be just on screen. However, it has been used to be able to do graphic design work. And since our pot is a physical thing, we need to make sure that the units are right. So one of the things I recommend is that once you have your design to go ahead and print it out on a piece of paper, if you're not quite sure, and make sure that it is exactly the size you want. Again, this is exactly the size that I designed on paper. I printed out on the scale one to one. If it's much smaller, much bigger, you probably have a problem with your SVG file as well. That's one common cause of failure that I've seen so far. I'm working on making the software more robust, but right now being careful is the best thing you can do. So let's go ahead and sketch out a new pot. So here is a new file. So first we wanna do is go into document properties. It's in pixels right now. I wanna put it in millimeters, put the display units in millimeters. Make sure the scale is one. All right, so now we should be good there. So our display units are up here, they're in millimeters. One of the things I will do is I will put down like a box that the size that I want. So let's draw a box here and let's say that I want the width to be 50 millimeters. Again, this will double because we're only drawing half the pot and the height to be 100. So that's good. I go ahead and put it at the origin. All right, so there we go. So now we have a box and this is basically gonna be our canvas we're gonna draw in. The tool that you want is this one here, draw Bezier curves and straight lines. So click it. You can then start drawing some curves out like that. So if we stay inside this volume, our pot's gonna be the right size. This won't work, this one has an undercut. The software does nothing to help you with undercuts right now. If you draw an undercut, either it'll fill processing or you wind up with a mold you can't use. At this point, you can go in and edit the nodes. So this one here is the node edit tool, so you can move these around like this, tweak things like that. All right, there we have a pot that would work. We have this weird foot, so probably won't actually wanna make that horizontal. You can round things off, so these nodes here let you smooth things out. Change the size maybe, or change the shape. You can make sure we don't have any undercuts. Just like that. So again, everything's in millimeters, so we can go ahead and make sure that the size is what we want. And then we're done, we can delete the box. I only want one curve in here. If there's more than one curve, it will fail. So make sure you only have one. Also make sure you're only drawing half the pot. This is the shape that's going to be revolved, just like I showed you with the other design. All right, so let me spend a minute and make this something a little less ugly. All right, I changed my mind. I wanted something that's a little bit more built out. This still looks like it has a good draft angle. I don't have any other cuts. I changed the size so we can see it's now 52 millimeters wide and 78 tall, so it's a little bit shorter. Go ahead and put it back at the origin at zero, zero. That's good. So now we can go ahead and save this. So we can go back to create, choose our file, and there's our pot. Looks like maybe the foot's a little bit big, so we can go back and tweak that a little bit. One other thing to note is that this is hollow. You can see inside of it. You don't want to draw a line across the top because you're not going to put clay across the top. You only want clay on the bottom and the sides. At this point, you go and do exactly what I showed you. You can go ahead and move on to the clay shrinkage, submit it, verify the design is doing what you want it to do. With the design proof, you know, check the size, all of that. Once you're good with that, either if it's not working, cancel it out, try again. If it is working, go ahead and proceed and it will generate the final design files. So that's Shapecast. As I mentioned, I'm sure there are some bugs. So if you do find any of those or something that you think is a bug, go ahead and send me a message and I will see if I can figure out what's going on. And as I work more and more of those out, I will add more people and hopefully this will be a useful tool for you to go ahead and design your own molds. I know for me, it's actually been really, really nice to have. I could do all the 3D modeling, but it was kind of a pain in the rear. So this is only for one part molds right now. I have been thinking about multi-part molds and some other potential tweaks, but the software right now is not doing any of those things. 
as I go ahead and develop some other options in my own use and I show those off here on the channel, I'll probably go ahead and slowly migrate those into the software itself for others to use. But that may happen on a larger timescale. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks.